Hey guys, welcome back to Maker's Corner. We're here at my old job today because, well, this is the inspiration for this month's project. In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how I made this really cool scrolling LED text sign. It's a really simple project. It's fully 3D printed, fairly inexpensive, and honestly, I think it looks pretty darn good. So if you're ready, let's get started. Now, the first step, of course, in any project is designing it. So this is the midsection. As you can see, I went through a couple of different revisions of this design and ultimately settled on this nice little compact version. Then we have our two end pieces, a plain one, and then one with a few extra bits and bobs for electronics. And of course, we'll also need a way to hold our LEDs in place. So I made these little hold downs. There are three different versions, a plain solid one, and then two others that have cutouts, which we'll explain a little bit later in the video. There are three parts you're going to have to adjust some of your print settings for. That is the midsection and the left and right sections. This is actually pretty easy. We're just going to right click, hit change filament. We'll change that to a white filament and hit slice. Once it's done slicing, we're going to come over here and drag this slider all the way down until we get to layer number three. Now layer number three, where you're going to right click, click change filament, and we're going to change it to a black filament and hit slice plate once more. Give it a moment to slice, and there we go. We now have our white and black filament changes. The only other important setting for the midsection and the two end pieces is to make sure that your bottom layers are set to only two layers. Now, a quick side note that I realized after I was almost finished editing this video was if you don't have a multicolor or multi-material capable printer, you're still able to do this exact same process. You'll just have to do it manually. Now, different printers do this a little bit differently, so you will need to look up how to do it on your specific printer, but it's super easy and there are plenty of YouTube tutorials out there. Now, the only other optional modification to our print files is for the right end cover. If you want to, we can flip the part around. We can go to our painting tool and we can paint in our reset and five volt labels. If you do not feel like doing this, you don't have to. I designed the lettering to be 0.001 millimeters below this surface. So if you don't do that, the slicer should just ignore it and you won't have anything there at all. And the remainder of the print settings for the rest of the parts really doesn't matter, so feel free to use whatever settings you are most comfortable with. And in case you were wondering, this 3.2 foot or just under one meter long sign took roughly 24 hours to print all the parts and used one and a half kilos of filament. Roughly $20 worth of filament if you're a savvy shopper, or eh, closer to about $35, $40 if you're a bit of a polymaker snob like I am. With all the printing out of the way, we can move on to installing our M4 heat set inserts. If you've never used heat set inserts before, they are very, very simple to use. You simply put them over the hole, and then using a soldering iron, you melt them into the plastic. You don't want to use a lot of pressure, just a little bit goes a long way. Let the heat of the soldering iron do the work, and try to keep it as straight and even as possible. In total, there are 50 heat set inserts that need to be installed, including the two in the lid for the electronics. Some music or a podcast playing in the background will definitely help you out here. Next up, I mixed up a little two-part epoxy and very, very carefully applied it to the ends of the midsections. I also made sure to get some down inside the slots that help to align the panels during the glue up. I then placed a heavy object on top to keep everything nice and tight while the glue was setting, and I also had a furry little friend join and, well, ultimately didn't really care. So back to gluing things up we go. I repeated this process of mixing up some epoxy and very, very carefully applying it to the ends. I tried to stay away from the white sections as much as possible. And, of course, after each section goes on, I place a heavy object on top to keep everything tight during the setting process. At this point, it was about 4 a.m. and I was getting really tired, so instead of doing section by section, I just decided to do the whole thing in one go and hoped for the best. As you can see, it came out pretty darn good. 
If I was to attempt this project again, I would probably be a little more careful about not getting epoxy on the sides, but realistically, no one's ever going to see it. After giving the two-part epoxy 24 hours to set, I moved on to modifying the LED panels a little bit. I removed the power injection wires on all three panels, and the out wires on one of the panels. I'll pause the video here so you can see which ones I'm talking about, make sure it's the out and not the in. This step isn't 100% necessary, but I wanted to do it just to keep the wiring inside the enclosure a little bit cleaner. And now we can begin installing our panels into our enclosure. And because the panels are flexible, you simply need to insert them and then bend them until they slot into place. You're also going to want to make sure that you install them with the solder joints on the panels themselves closest to the thick portion of the enclosure. This is very important. If you install them the other way around, well, the spacing is going to be a bit off and your sign isn't going to look that great. Next up, we're going to need a way to secure the panels in place so that they don't move around and keep everything nice and flat. For this, I designed these little hold downs and you may notice there's a couple different types. There's some solid ones. Those ones go on the skinnier side and they've got little counterboard holes, which is how we're going to secure them in place and keep them from moving around. I grabbed some M4 by 20 bolts and the length of them is actually very, very specific. Anything longer and they'll stick up, anything shorter and well, they just won't secure the panel in place. I first did this with my handy dandy screwdriver, but I quickly realized I was not going to sit there and screw in 24 of these things by hand. So I grabbed my drill and I put it on its lowest power setting and then I drove them about 95% of the way down and then came back with a hand tool and tightened them the rest of the way so we didn't damage the panel. Once that was done, we can flip it over and we can do the other side. Now these ones have some cutouts in these little panels and they simply correspond to the solder pads on the actual LED panels themselves so that we don't accidentally damage them or apply uneven pressure. Because my sign uses three panels, I have six of these in total and there are three of each type. Simply match the slot up to the solder joints and screw them down just like we did with the solid ones. And of course, because this sign is completely modular, you only need to print out however many you need. So if you make a shorter sign, you can print out less of these. Or if you make a longer sign, simply print more. The choice is 100% yours. And just like the other side, once I used the drill to get it about 90-95% of the way in, I went back with the hand tool to tighten it down properly. Again, just to be careful not to damage the panels. Okay, real quick pause here for just a quick moment. I've been working on a project that was inspired by something that used to be at Disney's Epcot that I wanted to kind of give a new twist on. However, I ran into one teeny tiny little problem. I don't have a 3D printer big enough to print some of the parts that I'm going to need for it. So while sitting here trying to figure out how to get around this problem, it finally hit me. Wait a minute. PCB way can help. And let me show you guys what I mean by that. Using PCBWay for your 3D printing needs is really easy. Just go to their website, come to the 3D printing page. We'll go ahead and grab our file, drop it into there. Tell them how many parts we need. I'm only going to need one for this project, or at least I hope I will. And then I'll select what kind of material. PLA should be fine. I'll probably maybe bump up the infill a little bit. And there we go. Just like that, we've got our part in there, and it's at a pretty reasonable price. Now, of course, PCBWay is good for more than just 3D printing. They've got CNC machining. They've got sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and of course, as the name implies, high-quality custom PCBs. With fast worldwide shipping, using PCBWay for your next project just might be one of the smartest things you can do. So check them out using my link below for a nice little discount off your first order. And of course, a big thank you to PCBWay for supporting the channel. Now back to the video. At this point, we can start installing our covers, and there are three types. The one I'm screwing in now is the normal end piece, which has the rounded edges for the, well, end of the sign. There are normal panels for the mid-sections of the sign, and there's a second end piece that holds our electronics, which we'll get to shortly. And don't forget to connect your LED panels together before putting the covers on. Now time for the fun part, getting to electronics. 
Now, don't worry, I will be providing a full wiring diagram because I know this might be a little difficult to keep up with, but it's pretty simple. I started by cutting off the one end of three DuPont style jumper wires, and I chose red, green, and white to match the ones that are on the LED strip to make things simple. I then fished my power jack into the panel and then secured it with its included nuts. Next, I took our two white ground wires and soldered it up to the black negative lead from the power jack. And then I did the exact same thing with our three red wires before covering everything up with some heat shrink to protect the connections. And good gravy, I am butchering this solder joint. Oof. Alright, thank god for heat shrink. Hide that away. I then took our single green wire and solder that to the one green wire from the LED connector and again slid some heat shrink tube over it to protect our connection. The next step was to wire in our reset switch. For this I just grabbed two random wires, color doesn't matter here because, well, we're going to ground and a pin on the ESP32. I pre tin the wires and slid some heat shrink over them so that we can protect our connections once it's been soldered to the reset switch. I fed our pre-tinned wires through the little holes on the tabs there, gave them a little twist, and then soldered them right up before sliding the heat shrink over and shrinking it down with our lighter, and then installing the switch into our rear panel, securing it with the included nut. And now it's finally time to install our ESP32. Or at least it would be. But first, we need some software to run everything. So down in the description, I'll have a link to my GitHub page where you can come and download the zip file. Once that's been downloaded, go ahead and open the Arduino sketch and we'll start working from there. With the Arduino IDE open, first thing we need to do is install some libraries. First one we're going to do is the Neo Matrix from Adafruit. This is how we're going to control our LEDs. And once you click on that, it'll ask you if you want to install these other dependencies. Just go ahead and hit yes. Once all the Adafruit libraries are installed, we're going to need to search for Wi-Fi Manager, and we'll install that library as well. All right, so now we can plug in our ESP32 into our computer via the USB port. And then we'll make sure we have our ESP32 selected in the Arduino IDE. And then finally, click Upload and wait for it to compile and send over to our ESP32. Depending on your computer, this can take a while. On my desktop, this takes about 30 seconds to compile, and on my laptop, it takes a little bit closer to about a minute and a half, sometimes two minutes. So again, depending on how fast your computer is, this may take a while. Once the upload is complete, you can unplug your ESP32, and then we can move on to actually connecting all the wires and installing it inside our sign. Fortunately, the wiring for this is very simple. Red goes to V in, white goes to ground, green goes to pin five, orange to pin 15, and black to ground. And now it's time to close everything up and admire our work. Oh, son of a I forgot to check for clearance issues and the lid wouldn't shut, so I had to redesign it and print a new one. Basically, classic case of measure twice, cut once. Fortunately, this was a relatively quick and easy fix. I just had to cut the power leads and then resolder them back together once they were inside the new lid. With that whole fiasco out of the way, we can finally connect our ESP32 up to the LED matrix inside of our enclosure and secure the lid in place with some M4 screws. Now all that's left to do is plug it in and test it out for the first time. All right, for a first test, I'd say that's looking pretty darn good. I'm not too crazy about that small little gap right in the middle of the sign, but from a regular, normal viewing distance, you actually can't even see it. So I guess we did all right. Now, if you want to use the sign as is, great. However, this sign is actually going to get mounted up on a wall, so I needed to design a way to actually secure it to said wall. And I just kind of sketched something up real quick. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but hey, doesn't need to be pretty, just needs to work. And it's going to be completely hidden anyways, so doesn't really matter. And as with any project I do, the step files will be included, so feel free to modify them for your own personal use case. And once the prints are complete, we just need to remove the support material. 
and then we can get to work removing some of the old panels to make way for our new ones that'll allow us to mount our sign to a wall. I designed these panels to use number six screws, but again, with the step files, feel free to modify them to whatever you want to use. All right, well, our sign is now complete, so I brought it up to the bar with me to hang up on the wall. Now, fortunately, there was a nice little trim piece at the bottom that actually helped me to keep everything nice and level without having to, well, actually bring out a level. And now with our sign securely mounted, it was time to plug it in and get it set up. Fortunately, this is a very easy process. We're going to first go to our Wi-Fi and we're going to look for LED sign setup and connect to that. Once you're connected, it should automatically launch into the Wi-Fi manager. If it doesn't for some reason, just open your web browser and go to 192.168.4.1. Once you're there, click on configure Wi-Fi. It'll scan for any networks in the area and select which one you want to connect to. In my case, I'll be using control. I'll type in my password and then I'll click on save and that will start the connection process and save our selection to the device's onboard memory. Within a few short seconds, you should see an IP address start scrolling across the sign. In my case, it's showing 192.168.0.103. So now I'm going to reconnect to the network that I just selected for the LED sign, and we're going to go to our web browser and type in that IP address, 192.168.0.103. Now once we're here, we can start adding messages, but first I'm gonna jump into the settings page and I'm gonna just gonna lower the brightness a little bit so that it's not overexposing the camera. Unfortunately, I don't really have a good camera to work with in these conditions. Dark room, bright lights, I'm working with what I got, sorry. But now we can hit add message and we can type out a message. I've already got a few ready here, so I typed in our first message and then I'm going to select a gradient effect. And as soon as I hit save, the sign will update and we'll start seeing our scrolling message. All right, and that's looking pretty good. Now, just for grins and giggles, I wanted to see how bright this sign was gonna be at 100%, so I jumped back into the settings, cranked it to 100, hit apply, and oh boy, oh boy, this does not come across very well on camera, but in person, this thing was bright. So if you had this sign in a very bright environment, trust me, it would be more than bright enough to handle it. We're gonna lower the brightness back down a bit to something a little more uh, sensible for the current environment we're in. And I'm also going to type out a few more messages and get a few different effects going so you guys can see a few examples of a couple of the effects that are available. Now, something I would like to mention real quick, this software is not complete or at least not to me it isn't. There are still a lot of other effects and features that I would like to add, and I would like to clean up the UI a little bit, make it a little more modern and clean. Unfortunately, I don't have a whole lot of time to spend working on it right now, but I will be working on it here and there when I have a little bit of free time. If you'd like to know when I release new updates to it, I'll leave it in a pinned comment, and a little bit of a shameless plug for my Instagram, I, well, started an Instagram, so uh, I'll leave a link to that down in the description as well. It's a great place to get some sneak peeks into some of my upcoming projects and things I'm working on, and a great way to, well, interact with me as well, because I will be checking that very often. If you guys enjoyed this video, I would definitely appreciate a like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that bell icon so you're notified when I release new videos. It really, really does help small content creators like myself grow the channel. There are a lot of hidden costs associated with running a channel like this and your support, even just a simple subscription, really, really helps. It costs you absolutely nothing, but it does make more videos like this possible. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.